Happy Easter and welcome to Holy Family Catholic Church. Today we celebrate Easter Sunday and the resurrection of the Lord. Our entrance hymn is Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Please stand as we begin today's celebration. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we gather on this great Sunday of the resurrection, let us praise God for the saving work of his Son. Mindful of his resurrection, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life and the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us your body to make us one with the Easter sacrifice. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest.
Let us pray. O God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good, and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name, the word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Please remain seated for the singing of the Easter sequence. Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciples went out and came to the tomb. 
they both run. But the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there on the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived first at the tomb, and he saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Happy, Easter. Happy Easter. Jesus Christ is risen. All right, some for God. Let's try it again. Jesus Christ is risen. Here we go. Great. My friends, for as long as I live, I don't think I will ever forget Easter of 2020. It was my first Easter as a pastor. It was supposed to be a very joyous occasion. Instead, it turned out to be one of the saddest Eucharistic celebrations I've ever been a part of, both as a priest and as a Catholic. Other than a few staff members running the live stream and my own mother sitting in the back corner of the church, I was entirely alone in front of the cameras. And I promised myself that day that I would never, ever take my people for granted. And so today, I want to begin by first welcoming you. Whether you worship here with us regularly every Sunday, whether you're visiting from elsewhere or from other faith traditions, whether you whom we call the CEO, Christmas and Easter only, I want to begin by welcoming you and thanking you for being here. A packed church is a beautiful sight to see. Now, we all know that kids say the darndest things, and so... And so here is an example. A family went to Mass on Easter Sunday, and on their way back, mom and dad were in the front, and the kids were in the back, a 12-year-old and a 6-year-old. The 12-year-old suddenly brought up a question. Mom and dad, when Jesus first rose from the dead and came out of the tomb, what was the first thing that he said? The parents looked at each other confused and said, geez, we don't know, but that's a great question. Why don't we go back to the church and ask our pastor? He seemed really smart. Now, that pastor obviously was not me. <laughs> so they came back to the church and they asked the pastor, Father, what was the first thing Jesus said when he came, up, when he came out of the tomb? And the priest was stumped. So he said, well, I don't really know. But as it happens, the bishop is here. And he's brilliant. <laughs> so let's go and ask him. Well, the bishop didn't have an answer either. But he didn't want to look stupid. So he said, well, it's not in the Bible. No one was there. So of course nobody knows. Now, at this point, though, the six-year-old have had it with these grown-up. He was hungry, he was tired, he wanted to go home, and so he said, listen, I know exactly what Jesus said. You do. Everybody turned and looked at him, and he said, of course. Confidently, he said, when Jesus came out of the tomb, he said, ta-da! <laughs> Can we please go home now? 
My friends, joy and laughter should fill this day, for we have come, we have come to celebrate what I would say the most significant event in our human history, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, an event that defied the normal, the natural circle of life, birth, life, and death. For indeed, death had been conquered, and the gates to life eternal was blasted open for us who have faith. Now, mind you though, I'm not all that concerned with what Jesus first said when he rose from the dead. What I'm more keenly interested in was the people to whom he first appeared after the resurrection. Now, after the terrible treatments he received from the high priests and the scribes, after being tortured by Pilate and then condemned to death, if I were the Lord Jesus, immediately after I rose from the dead, these would be the people that I would come to see. I would come to see as the best proof of my word and the best I told you so. And it would be even better if I managed to scare the bejesus out of them <laughs> as a little payback. And that is why I'm not God. <laughs> God doesn't need to prove himself to anyone. God owes no one an explanation. We either believe in him or we don't. He gains nothing if we do, and he loses nothing if we don't. However, the scriptures tell us these are the people to whom he first appeared. First, Mary Magdalene. Second, the disciples huddling in fear. And third, the two, the two on the way to Emmaus. These were the first people he appeared to on that first day of the week. Now, St. John Paul II also suggested that he appear to his mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. But since we don't have concrete proof, let's focus only on the people explicitly mentioned in the gospel. First, Mary Magdalene. She was the sinful woman from whom the Lord cast out seven demons, and she became his follower. And she was the one who stood so faithfully at the foot of the cross, along with Mary and John at the crucifixion. She was most devastated when the tomb was found empty. Convinced that someone has stolen the body of the Lord, and feeling like she had lost someone she loved the second time, Mary Magdalene wept inconsolably. And to this friend who was in deep mourning and grief, the Lord appeared. And he appeared to bring her the joy of seeing his resurrected body and give her the task of sharing that news to other people. Second, the disciples, the people whom the Lord handpicked and whom the Lord called his friends. They were also the people who in his moment of need deserted him and abandoned him. Now they were hiding and huddling in fear, for fear of persecution. To this group of people in fear, the Lord appeared, and he appeared to comfort them, and in a very subtle and gentle way, forgive them. Forgive them for falling short in his expectation of them. And finally, the Lord appeared to the two on the road to Emmaus. 
Now, scripture scholars su uh, suggested that they were actually a couple, husband and wife, Cleopas and his wife, Mary. They were walking home, and they were feeling disappointed and heartbroken. They had such high hopes and dreams for the Messiah, but the trauma of the cross had crushed and shattered their hopes and dreams. And so to these two, filled with disappointment, that the Lord appeared, and he appeared to rekindle that flame of hope and enthusiasm in them. To the people who were in mourning and grief, to the people in fear and shame, to the people filled with disappointment, these were the first to whom the Lord appeared. These were the Lord's priority, far more important than proving to the world that he had risen from the dead. He appeared to them because he knew they desperately needed him. So he made his way to be with them and to care for them. Then it's up to them to go out and spread the good news of the resurrection. And they did. They absolutely did. My friends, can we, see, can we not see ourselves in these individuals who encounter the resurrected Lord on that first Easter Sunday? Can we not see ourselves in those who have experienced griefs and losses? Can we not see ourselves in those who have stumbled and sinned? Can we not identify with those who are overcome by the fear of what's going on out there in the world? Can we not identify with those who at times are crushed by life's bitter disappointments? And if we can identify with them, then we can take comfort in the fact that we are the Lord's priority. The Lord knows that we need Him. We need Him to be the anchor of our life. And isn't that the reason why we are here? To be reminded that up to ourselves, we cannot make it in life. But with God, we can face anything. We can face anything with joy and courage. When all is said and done, may our resurrected Lord fill our hearts with His grace. Wherever we find ourselves, whatever struggles we may be facing in life, may we never forget that we do not face life's challenges alone. The resurrected Lord is walking with us every step and every turn of the way. And with Him, and with Him who had conquered death and suffering, He will enable us to overcome these things and overcome them most courageously and most joyfully. Happy Easter. Dear friends, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with him to a new life. Now that we have completed our Lenten observance, let us renew the promises we made at baptism when we renounce Satan and all the works of evil and promise to serve God faithfully in the Holy Church. So I ask all of you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? I do. do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the kingdom of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace for eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, your rising from the dead is the beginning of our new life, and so we pray. For the church, that the light of Christ may fill the hearts of all Christians, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that the people of every nation may come to share the peace and joy of this day, that the good news of the dead and resurrection of Christ May gladden the hearts of all, we pray to the Lord. For a parish community, that we may be steadfast witnesses to our resurrected Lord, extending mercy, hope, and healing in his name to all of God's children, we pray to the Lord. For a newly baptized who celebrated the Easter sacraments of last night vigil mass, that they may remain forever faithful to their baptismal promises, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the sick who are unable to be with us today, and for those who go forth from this Easter celebration to bring the Eucharist to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord the Mass intention is for all the intentions of a parish community. For those that have died, whom we remember at this Mass, that they may live forever in Christ, who has destroyed the power of death and opened the gates of heaven to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of undying, undying life, by your mighty hand you raised up Jesus from the grave and appointed him judge of the living and the dead. Hear our prayers and bestow upon all those baptized into his death the power flowing from the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exulting with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But on this day, above all, to law you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather people to your soul so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his, the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to your soul. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son 
and filled with his Holy Spirit, may we become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, the merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My sisters and brothers in the Lord, we're very grateful that you're here with us this morning celebrating the resurrection of our Lord. If you are visiting us from other faith tradition and so desire to enter into the communion line, I respectfully ask if you would cross your arms in front of your chest like this as an indication that you're not receiving communion 
and we will be more than happy to give you a blessing.
together we pray the Anima Christi as a prayer of thanksgiving after communion. So Christ sanctified me, body of Christ saved me, blood of Christ inebriate me, water from the side of Christ wash me, passion of Christ strengthen me, O good Jesus hear me, within your wounds hide me, permit me not to be separated from you. From the wicked foe defend me, at the hour of my death call me, and bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Well, my friends, on behalf of Father James, our deacons, our staff, Sister Dorothy, Sister Margaret, allow us to once again extend to you and your family a very, very happy and blessed Easter. Uh, we thank you for being with us this morning, celebrating the Lord's resurrection. And so, on your way out, please do remember that Christian charity begins in the parking lot. <laughs> so, drive safe, and whether at home or visiting, thank you for being with us. Know that there's two police officers out there directing traffic, and so just be patient and refrain from using the horn too much. Please stand for the closing prayer and the final blessing. I got you folks out in less than an hour. That's pretty, in, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate with gladness the Paschal feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts which are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go for the masses ended. Alleluia. Alleluia.